Amen. Bless the Lord. We're glad that you took our time to join us tonight at the Healing Place Weekly Prayer Call slash Bible Study slash Praise Reports, whatever we decide to do. But we thank God for you joining us on tonight. We thank God for Sister Naomi, Sister Lois, and and, and Pastor Aileen being with us tonight. And um, I'm your prayer warrior evangelist, Denise Williams. So be blessed to the Lord, and thank you for joining us. Tonight, I wanted to take a look quickly at Mark the third chapter, and actually we're going to start at the 10th verse, and I'm reading out of King James, but the Lord had put on my spirit about demonstrations of power, and one of the one of the things that I'm seeing in the churches now is that there is no demonstration of God's power, and we should be seeing healings, and we should be seeing people get blessed on a regular basis, or miracles as the world call it should be commonplace to us as believers, because yeah. God has given us dominion. That's what he gave to Adam. He gave Adam dominion over the earth. And Adam represented not only a male person, but also mankind. So we mm-hmm. should have dominion in our sphere of influence. So because we, we operate under God's spiritual authority that he imparts to us, we should be able to overcome. And I'm not seeing a lot of that anymore happening in churches or even amongst the body of Christ. Now, I don't know why that's happening or is that lack of teaching or I don't know what it is, but we need to come back to that. And we talked about this earlier in January when we started talking about 2019 is going back to foundational truth. And one of the foundational truths is that we do have dominion in the earth that, that God has imparted to us. So I wanted to look at Matthew 3, and I'm starting at verse 10. And um, this is G- t- talking about Jesus. For he had healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him, as many as had plagues. And unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. Verse 13, And he goes up into a mountain, and calleth unto him whom he would. And they came unto them, unto him. And there, here's where it gets interesting. And he ordained the twelve that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. And Simon, he surnamed Peter. So we're going to stop there. Now, that's interesting. In verse 13, it said he went up into a mountain and he called unto him who he would. He called unto him his disciples. Mm -hmm. So that tells us that the disciples had an ear to hear. We need an ear to hear God. We don't have that anymore. And we know that comes out of relationship, out of spending time with God, but we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. But, But the point that I'm making is that Jesus called his disciples. He selected them. He chose them. He was, he was very discerning on who he wanted to preach this gospel and who he wanted to empower to be able to cast out devils. And I, I found that pretty interesting. And it's funny because, you know, you read these scriptures a million, million times, but this time I got a different revelation from reading this passage right here. Amen. And if anybody has anything they'd like to add, they could just jump in. Amen. Bless the Lord. So he called them. Now, let me get my little notes here because I got I wrote down some notes. So when we start talking about kingdom and dominion and unlocking things, why do we need to unlock things in the kingdom? Because that's the only way we're going to tap into the heart of God. So he gives us keys, Matthew 16 and 19. He gives us keys to the kingdom. And it's not, this is not no, no real, you know, spooky spiritual stuff. It's God telling us that we have to be connected to him in order to receive these keys. So we know we have to be saved. We know we have to confess Christ as Savior. But it goes a little bit deeper than that. He said he ordained them. Now, Jesus ordained the 12. Now, listen to this, because the Holy Ghost was not freely given. They didn't have the power of the Holy Ghost dwelling on the inside of them, right? But Jesus empowered them. It's just like if you see a traffic cop in the middle of the street, 
and he holds up his hand and the bus stops. Now, we know physically that police officer cannot lay hands on the bus and make it stop if it's rolling towards him. But the authority of the city of New York or the city of Pennsylvania or wherever you are has empowered him that when those buses see him put up his hand in the street, they have to yield to him because he's been empowered by having that badge, by having that, that, that uniform. He's been empowered. It was the same thing with Jesus. The disciples in their own strength did not have the Holy Ghost. But because Jesus empowered them, when he called them, they were able to cast out demons. They were able to lay hands on the sick, and they recovered. It wasn't their faith that did that. It was Jesus ordaining them and empowering them. So it's the same thing now. We are not Jesus, but he has empowered us by allowing the Holy Ghost to dwell on the inside of us to be able to do the same exploits as the Bible says, because he said we will do greater works. Greater, mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's, It doesn't mean our, that we'll be greater than Jesus. It means that we'll be able to do more of it in the earth, because why? He's empowered mankind to do it now. Any blood-bought believer that's obedient to Christ can do the same thing. And what it is is that we're not teaching each other that this is God's desire, is that everybody operate in the gifts. Everybody should be able to lay hands. Everybody should be able to prophesy. Everybody should be able to interpret dreams. Everybody should be speaking in tongues because they should have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But that's not what's being taught anymore. People are just getting a good feeling and a good sermon, and they're going home, but there's no, there's no engagement. And our God is an interactive God. Yes. He sent them forth to preach. But he just didn't send them. He equipped them. That's why they were able to do great exploits, because they were equipped before they went. And that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother topic right there about running out there and not being equipped. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. So we know that the first thing that we need in order to engage God and have the keys that we are talking about to be able to overcome and have dominion, because that's what he told, um, 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 he told Adam, that you'll have dominion over the earth. That's why where Adam was able to just come up with all these names for the animals. An animal would come up, Adam would call that name out, and that's the name of that animal. That's how it, that's how it got its name. How do you, I mean, I mean, there's, there's, there's a bazillion animals. How many insects are there? There's all kinds of animals and bugs and insects and thousands and thousands of these names, and not one animal or insect has the same name. That's true. That was a divine event that God gave him the ability to be able to call things what they were, and that was it. So we all have that within us. It's just a matter of us seeking God to bring that out of us and operate in that. And in order to operate in your gifting or operate supernaturally, you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The reason why the disciples didn't need the Holy Ghost is because Jesus was the comforter. He was there with them. It wasn't until Jesus went back to be with the Father that they had to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's right. Amen? Amen. Amen. If anybody has anything they would like to add, they could jump in. Bless the Lord. So the uh, Hebrews eleven sixteen tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So again, this is another foundation. One foundation is we have to know Christ in the pardon of our sins. And this one tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Why? Because you need faith to be saved. If you don't believe that Jesus is Lord, how could you allow him to save you if you don't believe that he's Lord? So that's a foundational, that's a foundational um, 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 precept that, that is kind of lost. Because people think that just knowing that God exists is enough. That's why people will say, oh, I go to church, which is nice, but that's not enough. Going to church is not enough to save you. It just means that you know how to get up on Sunday morning to put on your clothes and go to church. <clears throat> Becomes a habit. Amen. So it's a it, it yeah it's, it's pretty much a habit. You just go into church because you know Mama used to take you or whatever you, whatever reason you have. Okay, so it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For He 
that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek seek him. And that whole, that whole chapter, that's the faith chapter. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So, so it's telling us that we have to start somewhere with faith because you have to believe in what you're doing. If you don't believe that your job is going to pay you, you ain't going to show up. That's right. Why would I show up if I, if, I, if I believe that I'm not even going to get paid for doing this? So everything starts with our belief system and where what we believe who God is. If you believe that you can, if you believe that God, God will allow you to produce miracles, then God will use you to produce miracles. But if you don't have faith to believe that God will use you to do it, guess what? Nothing will happen when you pray. See, there's a there's a there's a point where we have to ex- have a spirit of expectancy. We have to expect God. That's why, we, that's why we pray and say, God, I'm going to leave this in your hands. If I'm going to leave this in your hands, Lord, I don't know how it's going to get paid. I don't know how it's going to get done. But, God, you said that you'll take care of me. You said you're a reward of them that diligently seek you. So I'm just going to leave it in your hands. And this is where we have the disconnect because many of us just don't believe that God would use us to perform a miracle. And that's not scripture. That means that we have to grow in the faith area. If we don't believe that, you have to grow in that area. Because it says here that God ordained the disciples, and the disciples didn't know nothing at this point. At this point in the Gospels, they knew nothing about speaking in tongues. They knew nothing about uh, the prophetic or divine gifts or anything like that. All they knew was that they, they came because it says in the previous verse that Jesus called them. He said he called unto them who he would. He called the ones that he wanted, and they came. They left their professions, their fishing, you know, their fishing and whatever their profession was, and they came to follow Jesus. That's all they knew. And now that wakes me up to say, you know what? If these people who didn't know anything about the prophetic. Now think about all this teaching that we have now. We have all this teaching on the prophetic and the gifts and, and, and miracles. And we have all of this. And, we're, and we're, here we are dragging our feet and being slowful about it. And these men did not know anything about that. All they knew was Jesus called them. And here they are operating in, 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 in massive miracles. People getting healed. Demons coming out of people. So it makes me, it, it convicted me a little bit and said, well, what's our excuse? What's my excuse? <laughs> These were men that only had the law. All they knew was what the synagogue taught them and what the rabbi taught them in the synagogue. And here we are with all these Bible degrees and all of these de- theology things and alphabet city behind our name. <laughs> and we're still not seeing miracles. Oh. Because in this latter season, in this day that we're in now, the only way to show the world who we are is have a demonstration of God's power. That's why I always ask you guys about praise reports because we need to, we need to say it out loud. God did this thing. God created this miracle through prayer, through fasting, however it came. Because the world, when they listen to these playback calls, they want to hear a demonstration of God's power. Because think about it. Most of us have been growing up in churches for years. Most of us know how to quote scriptures for years. Where is the demonstration of God's power? And more than that, when we need God to show up for us, if we are not exercising our faith, when you need God to show up in your own personal life, guess what's going to happen? You're going to believe that God will show up. But if you don't exercise your faith... You'll be doubtful if God is going to show up for you. That's true. So this is why we need to go over this and understand that we are kingdom people and we have dominion in the earth. And God ordained it to be that way because we were supposed to rule the earth. And that day is still coming. It's just not now, but it's still coming. So, so that's what he told the disciples, take dominion. What does that mean? That means preach the gospel. That means convert. That means tell people about me so that their hearts will be pricked and we could take, take, take the world and bring it back to where we're supposed to be, which is followers of Christ. 
Okay? So God, so Christ allowed his glory to rest on these men. So they weren't baptized with the Holy Ghost, but they were baptized with his anointing. He allowed a little bit of his glory to rest on them. So that when demons saw them, they respected the Christ that walked with them. Even though he might not have been there in, in the person, in flesh, but he gave them, he charged them. Just like we go back to the police officer. The mayor's not standing right next to that police officer telling that bus to stop. But because the mayor's office empowered that officer, that every time he has on that little white glove and he puts his hand up in the middle of the street, you better stop. Or the consequence is you will be arrested. Mm -hmm. He empowered him. So it's the same thing with us. God has empowered us to be able to take dominion. And anything that's not like Christ has to respect the power of God that's inside of us. That's right. Amen. Amen. So now what we're doing now in this season is we want to walk in more of the demonstration and show the, the demonstrations of power of the uh, demonstrations of the power of God in the world. Not so that we could brag about it, but to show them that there's a difference in believing in Jesus Christ. This is not another idol. This is not another lip service type thing. It is there's power associated with Christ. No other relationship with God can can say that because it wouldn't be true. So the first thing we have to have is faith to even believe that God can save us. You have to start there. The next thing we have to do is intercession. Intercession is, in my mind, intercession is just establishing an intimate relationship with God. And you're doing it through prayer. That's all it is. It's an intimate relationship. And the more time that we spend with God, the more he knows us. He knows our spirit. There has to be a way that we have to get closer to God. And in the flesh, the flesh, the, the, the flesh doesn't agree with the spirit of God. So God has to clean up our flesh, clean up our carnality, or anything else that comes between us and him. Sometimes it's things that we're aware of, and sometimes it's things that we're not aware of. But in spending time with him in intercession, in prayer, we will, he'll be able to root out of us whatever is not pleasing to him so that we can, as we, as we, as we always say in church, approach the throne of grace. Yes. Amen? Amen. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to add at this point? Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Now, if we turn quickly to um if we turn quickly to Mark the fourth chapter. Amen. I'm sorry, Amen. the fifth chapter, Mark the fifth chapter. Okay. And I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but this is a, this is about um Jesus curing the man, healing the Gadarene. And we're going to read some of that. I'm going to read the first couple of chapters. And when they came over to the other side of the sea into the country of Gadarenes, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains that had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried with a loud voice and said, what, I, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, the Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Now, that's interesting that this man is full of demons. He, he's confused. He's cutting himself up. He's running around screaming and, and acting crazy and throwing himself in water and all kinds of other things. But immediately when he saw Jesus, he had, he, he had the presence of mind to go and worship Jesus. Why? Because the spirit inside of him is subject to Christ. So the spirit that's inside of other people 
the demons that's inside of other people are subject to the Christ that worketh in us. We just have to know how to exude our authority over that demon or over that place or over that situation. In other words, God already set it up for us for us to win. Oh, yeah, definitely. You don't have to. It's not a struggle. All we have to do is invoke Jesus and invoke or, or invoke the blood of Jesus, and they have to submit. That demon has to submit. Jesus didn't tell him to worship him. He just fell down his feet and worshiped him. Why? Because he recognized who he was. He recognized Christ. Uh-huh. And the problem is a lot of us are not living a life that the demons can recognize the Christ in us. Because many people are walking around thinking that they're saved, and they're not even saved. They go on on Sundays, and they get in a little pep talk. That's what I call it, a pep talk. Because if, if you are in a church, and you're being preached to, and there's no deliverance, and you don't change your life, and you're not being convicted, then why are you going to that church? Church is not supposed to be a comfortable place. It's supposed to challenge us. It's supposed to make us go, ooh, that's me. I need to get that together. If it's not happening, then something's wrong. We should ask God to deliver us a little bit more every day because all of us need deliverance. That's true. Amen. All of us. It's just a matter of how much. Some need more than others, but guess what? We all need some deliverance because we're all striving for some for perfection in the spirit. That's true. And you got to go somewhere where your spirit man can be fed. Definitely. That's yeah, true. Very true. What is the sense of being in the church and then dying, dying spiritually, and you sit right there in the church? That's like dying of hunger while you're sitting in front of a, a, a table full of food. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we have to get into a place where these miracles manifest in our daily life. We have to start we have to start calling and commanding sicknesses to leave us, diseases to leave us. And also I'm gonna I'm gonna do another teaching on the um who Jesus on the sacraments because that is tied to our healing as well. But we 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 don't have time to get into that tonight. But I wanted to share this to this part tonight because we need to start getting thirsty for God and start walking in the high places in Christ. Cause there's some things that we're going through. We shouldn't even be going through. There's some things that you could command it to stop and God will do it in the name of Jesus for you. Now there's some lessons that we do have to go through. There's some struggles that we are going to have to go through it because God is teaching us a principle in going through it. So not everything is going to be explained away in prayer. Not everything. We can't make everything disappear in prayer because there are some things that we have to go through. But there are other things that God will give us. He will grant us the grace to be able to command it to not be so, and it will stop in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So if anybody has a comment on that, question, comment, scripture, anything they want to share regarding our little lesson on tonight is 830, and I wanted to shift a little bit so we could have time to pray. Bless the Lord. I just want to say real quickly that it's interesting how even in the third chapter and in the fifth chapter that when the demons saw Jesus that they rushed to go worship him, how they recognized him right away. And so many of us who profess Christ, we don't even know when he's there, when he's being manifested right around us. But Mm. but the demons know. Amen. And that's why we have to have an intimate relationship with Christ because guess what? If you don't know, if you don't, if you don't know Christ when you see him, guess what? Demons will operate in your midst and you won't even be able to tell the difference. That's why mm-hmm. we have to be intimate with God because so many of us are, are, have been playing church for so long that when the anointing shows up for real, people get scared because they've mm-hmm. never seen it before. Mm-hmm. Yep. Amen. Does anybody else have a question or a comment or something they want to add before we get into our um, prayer time? Bless the Lord. Lois?
Bless the Lord. Naomi, we haven't heard from you. You have anything you'd like to add or share? No, that was just really um that was really eye opening that he that that he called them. You know. That he that he called them. Yes. And and and, and how they had to have a you said a relationship with him to be able to hear hear his voice. Mm-hmm. You know. So um we we have to be in a place where we're walking in the spirit and and, and spirit filled so that we can be able to hear his voice so that when he does call us and he wants to use us or he you know, he wants to 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 use us, to use us in the mm-hmm. earth to bring about uh, the demonstrate, like you said, to demonstrate the power, his power, because that is what the world is looking for right now. You right. Know, they, sure. they don't. They they don't. They they've heard enough of religious, mm-hmm. religious ide- mm-hmm. ideology. They heard mm-hmm. enough of uh, of legalism. They heard enough of uh, of of, of <laughs> hypocrites mm-hmm. preaching from the pulpit, from the pulpit to the front door. Mm-hmm. And not living it, so they've heard enough of it. So mm-hmm. if we can, we can demonstrate the power of God. We can, we can, we can like kickstart that their faith in order to to receive Christ. Exactly. You yeah. know. Mm-hmm. So we 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 need to be in a place where we can hear the voice of God, so that we can be able to be used by Him, so that we can demonstrate His power, so that the people can have faith once again to receive salvation. Amen. So it's good, man. That's good, man. Amen. And you know the scripture that came to mind, Naomi, when I when I read that about him calling the disciples, um, I'm I'm loosely quoting it. So if somebody else knows the scripture better than me, you could quote it. And it was, uh, um, I before I knew thee, I formed thee, or before I I formed thee, before I knew thee. Do, do, is, does anybody remember that scripture? Before you were formed in your mother, your mother's womb. Right. Uh, it is, it, it, the scripture is, before I knew you, before you were formed in your mother's womb, before I formed you in your mother's womb. Thank you, Lois. That's the scripture that came into my spirit when I read that. Is it, is so in other words, God already has you earmarked for, for, for use in his kingdom. He already had us earmarked. He already had the disciples earmarked that he, when he came in the flesh to the earth, he already knew who he was going to call. So God already knows what he's going to call you to, whether it's evangelism, whether it's, whether it's missions work, whether it's whatever it is that God's going to call you to. He already knows that before you were formed in your mother's womb. We mm-hmm. just have to be sensitive mm-hmm. enough to respond to it. Mm-hmm. Who was that who just said something? Naomi. He says okay. it in the old and he says it in the new. Mm-hmm. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1 and 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Um, and then in, in Ephesians 1 and 4, it says, for he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. There you go. So, old and new. He let him old and know. new. So what do we know about God when he says something more than one time? It's relevant. Mm-hmm. It's important if he repeats it. He said it in the Old Testament. He said it in the New Testament. In the New Testament, he said, before the foundations of the world. In the Old Testament, before I knew you in your mother's, your, your mother's womb. Mm-hmm. Right. So either way, go ahead, Lois. I was going to say, anytime God repeats something, he establishes it. Exactly. He establishes it. Just like he established us to be. I'm sorry, go ahead, Naomi. I said, it lets us know that. That he has a plan for us. It just, it just, oh, it just, it just confirms, you know, the the scripture in Jeremiah. I know the plans that I have for you. He had yeah. a plan from us from the from the very beginning, Absolutely. from the very beginning. So even though you, your birth may seem like a, a a mistake, like I was looking at um one of the programs on TV and a uh, mother was estranged, the daughter was estranged from the mother because she said that her mother gave her to her godparents to bring her up. She, mm. but, her parent, but her mother was 17 when she had her. And mm-hmm. so she was saying, but why you didn't even give me to my grandparents? And then she told her, your grandmother didn't want you. And how devastated she was to hear that. And mm-hmm. she was just crying, and she was saying that, you know, 
you didn't want me, and you, my mother, and my father wasn't in my life. You didn't want me, and then my grandparents. You told me you didn't want me, and mm-hmm. how that 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 had to. I mean, that cut me. So I know it had to cut her to her soul. Mm-hmm. That here it is. She felt like she wasn't even wanted, but but God wanted you. God right. God you. wanted that life here for God a purpose. God wanted you to be in that and, and to be brought up by those people. He knows the path that we take. He knows it. If we just mm-hmm. we just gotta walk it and trust him, you know. Amen. So, so that that was that was really impactful for me. And the thing is, I read this scripture, I have read that passage all my life, a million times over. But this time, the part about him calling the disciples really spoke to me. That God calls us and He earmarks us for service, because mm-hmm. He said he, he He established a kingdom. That He established a kingdom with Peter when He said, "Upon this rock I will build my church." That is a kingdom principle. Yes. He built his church upon this rock. What? The rock of salvation. That was the seat of salvation to begin to build the New Testament church. And Peter was going to be one of the forerunners of the New Testament church. Of course, he didn't know it when he first showed up. We don't know what what the end of the matter is that God has for us. But we do know that God has called us and he establishes us and he ordains us once we give our hearts to him. You have to be connected to the vine some way. Amen? Amen. Amen. And it's a kingdom principle. Just like there's a hierarchy in government. We talked about the policemen. There's a hierarchy. The policeman reports to the mayor. The mayor reports to the governor. There's a hierarchy in heaven. Mm -hmm. We answer to God. Mm -hmm. But he gives us the proper tools that we need to be able to live a successful Christian life because he gives us, not only does he give us kingdom principles to live by, but he also gives us dominion over our area of influence, whatever area of influence you are in now, the people you interact with, the places you go, the job you're on, the supervisor you deal with, all of that stuff is your sphere of influence because you can influence them for Christ. Amen? Amen. Because mm-hmm. God cannot lie. God gave this earth to mankind to rule and to reign. He gave this earth to man. And so his will will be done. Man shall rule and reign. No matter how Satan and his principalities and powers and dominions and thrones will try to come against to destroy uh, mankind and to cause mm. mankind to mm. do his free will not to, to, to forfeit his right over the earth, it's not going to happen. Because God's word has to be uh, uh, established. God's word has to be done. And he said man should have this earth and have dominion in this earth. Therefore, it has to be done. It has Amen. To be. And, then, and then God gives us the promise that even though we have dominion over the kingdom, there's some things that are still going to have to happen. Because what did Jesus say? This is the beginning of sorrows, but the end is not yet. So the things that we see going on in our environment and the things that we see going on in our government, some of those things have to happen because they've been already foretold in the word of God on a governmental level. Mm -hmm. There's some things in government that have to happen, but God is so merciful that in the midst of what's going on, in the midst of what the government is doing, we can still be prosperous even in times of famine. In the midst of a recession, we can still have jobs. We can still be able to pay our bills because we're walking with Christ. Even though on, on a government level, that recession had to happen. Mm-hmm. So that had to happen. The like he's forsaken or his seed begging bread. Exactly. God always makes a way for his people to prosper. Mm-hmm. Amen. So that's why, that's why we have to hold on to the whole... The, the, to, to God and put on the whole armor of God because he has given us dominion over a kingdom. When he died on the cross, he brought back everything that Adam, Ad, Adam for, forfeited. We got it back. But now the difference is, is that we don't know that we're supposed to walk in it. Right. Once you know who you are and you're able to walk in it by, by understanding the kingdom principles, then we can expect God to show up and give us our miracle. 
We'll expect God to heal people. We'll have confidence in the prayers that we pray to God, and we won't have a lack of faith. And we'll speak forth. We'll speak forth with power, like you were saying. Is mm-hmm. you, you you can change your situation. You know, you can exactly. change your situation because you got that. You got that authority. It's what you believe. So. Um, so we have that that dominion. We have uh, that, that that authority. I mean, we have that authority. Amen. So, so it's just a matter, of, like you said, recognizing it. Because, because God has created us to be a prophetic people. How else? Mm-hmm. How else would the disciples have known to seek out Jesus? If the scripture says he he went into the mountain, and in my in my Holy Ghost imagination, I'm going to believe that he prayed, and he called them. Mm-hmm. How did they know to come? They had to have an ear for the prophetic. That's right. So this is what it is. We are prophetic people. So all you have to do is say it. And God will do it. Because he honors the word of the prophet. Mm-hmm. He honors their word. Mm-hmm. The prophet said, well, it's not going to rain no more. Lord, don't let it rain. And guess what? It's, it did rain. hmm It just didn't rain. So God gives us dominion over over the earth, but we have to engage it. And the only way to engage it is to start understanding the kingdom of God and how he wants us to operate. Because people think the kingdom of God is heaven. And yes, it is heaven. But we have authority and dominion in the earth because he's giving us kingdom here too. Doesn't matter where we are. If God has if God has given ordained us to be a, a prophetic people and to walk in kingdom principles, it doesn't matter if we're here in the flesh or here or there with Him in heaven in the spirit. We're still kingdom people. Mm-hmm. That's a beautiful part about God, but we have to engage Him, mm-hmm. and we have to know who we are, and we have to intercede. We have to pray and spend time with Him. You know, because Lois and I were talking about some decisions that had to be made. And the only thing that we have to do about that is pray. And God will reveal himself. Mm -hmm. Whatever the situation is, God will begin to reveal himself to you so that you'll know the right decision to make. Doesn't mean that we'll never make a mistake. Because sometimes we can misinterpret what what God's instructions are. But if we're listening carefully, even in our mistakes, God will use it for his glory. Yes. That's how loving he is. Even our mistakes he mm-hmm. uses for his glory. That's right. Amen. So going back to what you said, Naomi, about the baby, there's no mistakes with babies. We call them mistakes because we hadn't planned for that baby. But God mm-hmm. knew from the foundation of the world that that soul would be here. Mm-hmm. So we call them mistakes, but that's that's us calling it a mistake. God never calls a child a mistake. No, he no. don't. Or anything that we do is not really a mistake because God allows it for a reason. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a test and sometimes it's a test of our faith. God wants to see where your faith is at. Are you going to invoke kingdom principles and take command and dominion over that thing? Or are you just going to lay down and do the woe is me and and just wait for stuff to happen? Mm -hmm. We have to listen to his call. So that we can answer and know who God is in our lives. So bless the Lord. I hope that this was a blessing to you because that part about him calling to his disciples really spoke to me. And it spoke to my faith that I need to come up in some areas. And um, I'm going to be taking all of that to the Lord. Especially if you have a challenge in a financial area or, or, or with a healing. It's time for us to start believing God. Amen. 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 It's just time for us to start believing God. If we the thanks of God don't use the benefits of the kingdom that God has set before us, how are we going to tell somebody else? If we ourselves who say we are our father's children, we are his children, and we're not taking advantage of the benefits, and we're walking around with our heads hanging down, how can we share God's love with anybody else? They don't want our God. He got us. We we walking around lacking and all sad. But this is the thing is that if we don't have joy for our own life, if you have joy on the inside, people will see it. People will know it's a difference. 
Absolutely. So the joy that we have in the Lord should be bubbling up out of us every day. That's why I always smile. Every time I hear Lois's voice, I smile. <laughs> yes. Now, I don't know if she's that bubbly every day on the inside, but on the outside, she's always saying, grace and peace, grace and peace. <laughs> How could you hear that and not smile? I mean, we're smiling now on the phone, and she's not even saying it. I don't know. I'm happy to hear her voice. So the joy of the Lord is, what does the Bible say? Oh, it's our strength. strength. So we have to find that joy in the Lord and work through whatever it is that's hindering us or binding us up from believing that God is who he is and believing that he will do it for us. Because a lot of us go out here and we pray for other people and we believe for them. But then when we have a, such a hard time believing for our own miracles. Mm-hmm. We pray for them and we believe God with them and God moves for them. And you're like, oh, yay, God, that's wonderful. And then when it's your time to believe God, mm-hmm. you be like, oh, I don't know if this is going to happen. But just in case this don't happen, I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the same, the same, the same belief, we, belief that we give to other people and have for other people, the same faith that we place in the process for other people, we have to also have that that same faith for our process. And we have to learn how to pray to God in such a way where he understands that we are learning, we want to grow and say, well, God, even if you don't do this, I know you're still God. I know you're still going to do it. I know my expected end is going to be blessed because you're still my God, even if it doesn't work out the way I want it to work out. Because believe it or not, we all go into situations believing a certain way that something should work out. And we have to learn to say, you know what, God, even if it don't work out the way I want it to work out, then you work it out, you know, according to your will. And that's what we get stuck at because we don't relinquish control. Say that again, Pastor Aileen. I say you always say God will not hold any good thing from us. So if, you know, sometimes... The things that we want, if he withhold them, it's for our good. It's Amen. still for our good. It's Amen. always for our good, bless the Lord. Yes. It sure is. Mm-hmm. It sure is. Amen. Us. 